bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they keep making these sequels? Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, back at it again. We'll go behind the scenes now and then for the tried and true summer movie mega hit. Also, I hate to speak in movie cliche quotes, but your heart will sing and your spirit will soar. It's the feel-good hit of the season. It's relentlessly inspirational and all right, I'm done. But it's all true. I'm just talking about Ezra. We'll talk with the director and stars and how it makes the world a better place. And then, lock the door and throw away the key for 60 days. We're talking about 60 days in. It's back for another season in the most crime-ridden state in America. Of course, I'm talking about the hard-hitting streets of Utah? Utah? I guess it's true. They got some drama there. We'll talk to the sheriff about it. And once we get inside, we'll get outside to give you a preview of Inside Out 2. Come on now, take a seat and take a look. Let's do it. Let's take a look. If I can just, sorry. The normal route to the bathroom was closed off, so I had to go that way. Like, not literally back there, not with all these electronics, but you know what I'm talking about. Hey, how you doing? It's time for bad boys, bad boys to save the box office. I know we said that about everything opening in May, but it didn't quite do it. And look, I know the show Take a Look is where we talk about movies on big screens and small screens alike, but right now, let this be a public service announcement. Get out there and go see a movie, right now! Well, I mean, not right now, but after this show, in about 27 minutes, I want you to go see a movie, and might that movie be Bad Boys 4? Yes, Bad Boys, Bad Boys, what you gonna do? I don't wanna get into this until we talk with someone who went to a deep dive on Bad Boys Ride or Die, my friend, Jasmine Simpkins! How you doing, buddy? Hello, hello. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing awesome. Uh, you are one of the most highly regarded entertainment journalists throughout Hollywood. Uh, but more importantly, you're a friend of mine. And I got to tell you, if it's OK, how I first met you. OK, go ahead. All right. This sounds like it's a deep flex, and indeed it is because it's true. The billionaire Richard Branson invited you and I and a couple other people to join his private helicopter to go to his spaceport. We were among the first in the world to ever see where private space was going to happen for the very first time, specifically to talk to yep. Will Smith. Do you remember that? Yep, I remember that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Full circle okay. moment, right? It was a very cool movie moment, movie and it sounds like I'm lying. And thank goodness I have. If not for like this 15 seconds of Twitter, uh, there would be no record of it whatsoever to prove that it took place, but it took place. And I, I understand that you have like oh, an embarrassing photo that. of another time that you and I were hanging out together interviewing big stars about big things. I can't recall what we were in London for. We were exploring the city, but then also doing our jobs. We're serious film critics, guys, and we love movies. Exactly, and, and speaking you know, of that, we've been down the road a couple times talking about this very subject, Bad Boys. Now we're on Bad Boys 4. So Jasmine, this is the one reason I wanted to bring you in. You know more than most about this movie, and more specifically, you were invited to do a deep dive to go on location to Stunt Drive. Can you tell me about that? <laughs> okay, so, okay. Really quickly, I think we all had, have seen or heard that, you know, Will did not want to do, Will Smith, um, did not want to do a traditional junket for this film. He didn't want to do traditional press with this film. So right. even with the trailer launch and the rollout, they kind of invited some influencers. I think he just wanted to have fun. Seeing the film, I understand why. I mean, it's just over the top. It's explosions. It's running. It's gunning. It's Marcus. It's, you know, um, they're just having in like they're just having a good time and so for the press day they invited us all to the porsche center there's a drive center a all little right. bit outside of los angeles and carson so you go you can get in a porsche i mean they, and then they, they've got them all and if you're a porsche fan i mean you're going to be in heaven so they invite us out you pick your car and there's a basically you have to it's a speed test right there's also an area where there's like water and you have to try and like control the car i mean they're really putting you in the driver's seat as if you're mike lowry right then you do an obstacle course and you're like chasing the bad guys and i'm telling you the obstacle course was not just like oh i'm just running through some tires no i mean you climb a rope you hop over you run up a, a wall i mean this is like american gladiator style <laughs> And I was so bruised the next day, but Will's got the bullhorn and he's like egging people on. I mean, it was a fun time and they were very much interacting with people through the entire day. So I think to me, this is going to really set a new trend when it comes to 
Mark, how we do junkets coming up. I think everybody's going to be jumping in this, trying to have fun with press. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, they've also gone to extraordinary measures in other ways to talk about this movie, specifically bringing in the Heat, the Miami Heat's biggest star, like this. Take a look. You expecting anybody? No. Yo, man, what you doing? I want to be a bad boy. You want to give up an NBA career to be a cop? Ooh, we no bad boy. Y'all not just cops. Y'all like superheroes. Bad boys don't just kick the door open. No. You gotta kick it in and say something cool. You had me in hello. What the? Did he do a romantic comedy quote? Good black over there and do that again. Nothing but next. Boom. Jimmy Butler. Did you say your own name? No. But you got to understand, man. There ain't no timeouts in this game. It's the final test right here. Let's separate the bad boys That's from right. just the boys. No water breaks, no cheerleaders. Oh. The question is, man, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Mm. Snick, so snick, 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 snick. We ride together, we die together. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Hey, no. You gotta earn that one. No. No. I love that. I love uh, it. We cut it before the end, but if you watch the whole thing, uh, Messi makes an appearance in it, and the internet's blowing up wondering, is it really Messi or a deep fake? Do you have any insight on that? Bad boys? I don't have any insight on that. I think it's really messy. Let me tell you why. Because this franchise, from the very beginning, has always really been good at pulling in the star power. Remember, the very first Bad Boys, we had none other than John Sally, who obviously is an NBA champ who had a guest role in the film. So yeah. I, I I, really do think that they love bringing in sports icons, you know, sports figures into the franchise in any way that they can. And quick spoiler alert, we might see we might see John. We may or may not see John in this one. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, yeah, awesome. don't don't spoil, but I like I can't play poker and I think I just kind of gave it away. Uh, speaking of cameos, did you know one time I had a brush encounter with Martin Lawrence? They invited me to be on an episode of Martin and I did my own stunts. True story. I, I know you're young. You probably don't know the character of Otis, but Otis actually kicked me in the bum as I was going through a door. I love this and I love Martin, by the way. I mean, I'm a huge Martin fan. I do remember the character Otis. Mark, I am dead. I cannot even believe. Look at you. You can't even this fit my so hair cool. in frame. Oh my gosh, look at this. All right, let's forget wow. about that for a moment. Wow. I want to scrub that. Uh, <laughs> not too long after that, I was talking to them about their early memories of this game. What I love about it, they trained you to do driving stunts. But in this discussion, uh, Martin Lawrence seems to say Michael Bay was very protective and didn't want them doing their own stunts. Will Smith, on the other hand, saw it a different way. Take a look. That's not high risk, you know, then, uh, you know, they, they, they don't mind. They're supported. But but for the most part, not. Nah, you know, I... I twist my ankle or jumping over a fence or something and Mike got he didn't like you know he got really upset he don't so he don't want he don't want you getting hurt no he's got an insurance no. policy to pay for it. well well no I just think you know I think he genuinely you know wants you to be all right he don't want you to get hurt at the expense of making a film this is movie making what about these action sequences Michael Bay's got a habit of kind of pushing everything to the next level mm -hmm. even where his actors are concerned does he take out like the most awesome insurance policy I mean, look, just in case <laughs> Oh, now, you know, Michael, man, you you have to, uh, you got to know how to say, Michael, listen, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so you can put somebody else in there and have them drive that car off of that hill, but I'm not doing that. He's like, come on, man, come on, dude, just go get it, come on. You're an action hero, dude. Right. I'm like, okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to be in my trailer. <laughs> Man, that's worth the price of admission alone. Will Smith doing a Michael Bay impression. I love that. I loved seeing them when they were like 12 years old starting this movie, which is, by the way, about how old you were when you started your entertainment career, as I recall. So, Bad Boys 4, Ride or Die, go see it. Why? Why go see it? Oh, I, I love that you asked me this question because I've been seeing people say that this, people who've seen it already, that it's the best of the franchise. And I, I want to quantify why I think it is the best of the franchise. I think it's the funniest of the franchise. Martin Lawrence is, I think, back to his comedic chops and timing. You know, he just was so quick, so witty. The jokes were just, I, I would love to have known how much of those jokes were written or some of the things that he just came up off the top of his head. I mean, 
you laugh out loud a lot in this film, and I think it's all thanks to him. The explosions are there, the run sequences, the amazing shots, you know, that we know from these films, that's all there. They didn't, they didn't take anything away. They didn't add anything extra, I would say, either. Um, it's, it's your typical bad boys film. I just think it's funnier. I agree. The, uh, you know, it's hard to write when people reach a certain age and they're trying to pull off being in an action movie. I thought they wrote around that perfectly. It has the heart of a Jerry Bruckheimer, Michael Bay film, which is where this franchise all began. Jasmine Simpkins, you are amazing. Where do we find you on Instagram? You will find me at Jasmine A. Simpkins on Instagram and Jazz, J-A-Z-Z, A-K-A-I, on X. Love you on KTLA in Hollywood. I also love you on Hip Hollywood, and you're an amazing human being. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you. There you Don't go. Bad boys, All right. Guys. Thank you, Jasmine. Coming up next on this very show, take a look at a different kind of movie. No big explosions, no big stunts. However, there is a road trip involved, and that kid, I think he's going to go on to win the Oscar. I'll tell you why. As Take a Look continues, we'll be right back. And we are back. Thanks for hanging out and taking a look with us. Uh, my name is Mark S. Allen. This is a show where we take a look at movies on the big and small screen alike. Speaking of the small screen, be sure and rewatch the show. Like and subscribe. Take a look on YouTube. You're going to find it there. But forget about that for now. I want you to go out to the movies right now because this next movie will help you escape the summer heat and also make you feel better. This is the movie the world needs right now. It's Ezra. Remember this name. William Fitzgerald. He is the true star of the film. I don't care who else is building it. He is the kid in this movie. The movie is the story of an autistic boy who is 12 years old. He too is an autistic boy playing that part at 12 years old, robbing every scene. He crushes it in every performance against Oscar winner uh, Robert De Niro, Bobby Cannavale, Rose Byrne. In fact, I spoke with the latter two about it. Take a look. Two of you are the best of the best, and you worked with the best of the best. But when you're playing opposite this guy, how do you hold your own without, like, just looking around and going, are you seeing this? Are you looking at this performance? <laughs> Rose, for you specifically, how was it? Oh, I mean, it, yeah, it, you, it, it was uh, it's a testament to Tony Golden, too, to get this incredible cast. You know, he was so extraordinary at doing that. But, like, yeah, you've, got, you've still got to try to stay in the moment, even though you might feel uh, overwhelmed with someone. Yeah, it's one of those one of those things. But I felt like, you know, finding William was, was really hard, too. Finding William Fitzgerald, they saw over 100 young sure. actors and who were all fantastic. But it's about chemistry, right? And finding yeah. that right chemistry yeah, well, with Bobby and William is just very natural and um, charming and warm. And he had that warmth to sort of carry him through. Yeah. And you know, you're right. There were many, many times that you'd go, uh, you know, you'd cut and go, did you, did, did you see what he did? Did, 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 you, did you guys, did you catch that? Because this kid was just money every time. Such nice people. And like, this movie is so heartwarming when even you see the actors in it, you go, oh, I love those guys. Largely because of the movie I just saw them in. I, you know, I think I forgot to say how funny this movie is. It's funny, albeit poignant, all at the same time. Uh, it compares to nothing else. It's directed by and, and also stars Tony Goldwyn. Now, if that name doesn't automatically bring up the image, he's the bad, uh, bad guy in the movie Ghost. Anybody? Anybody? Eh, regardless, we talked. You'll remember. Take a look. Let's talk about casting gold. Your title star in this movie. To be in a scene with Robert De Niro, and this is your first movie, and you're stealing every single moment yeah. in that scene. It says something. At what point did you look and know that you had gold? Well, with William, you know, we 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 were always going to cast an autistic child to play Ezra. There was no way we were going to cast a neurotypical actor to play that part. So we launched this major nationwide search, saw over 100 kids, um, and couldn't find him. And we found William about three weeks before we started shooting. His mom sent in a tape, and uh, we were blown away by it. And we asked if he could come in the next day to meet Bobby. It turned out he was on the East Coast where we were. And uh, William, the second I met him, first of all, he looked like Tony Spiridakis' son, Dimitri. When he came in and met Bobby, he was just a natural. He just, uh, they hit it off. He was completely unintimidated. He'd never acted before, but knew what he was doing. They were improvising, you know, in the audition room. He was completely unintimidated by Robert De Niro. Uh, it's just, he was, um, has that rare thing uh, that great actors have of being able to just unselfconsciously be himself in front of the camera. 
Rare thing indeed. My organization, the Broadcast Film Critics Association Critics' Choice Awards, I'm telling you right now, that will be the best youth performance. The kid should get an Oscar. Someday, indeed, he will. Look, we are going to talk about small screens in a moment, but right now I'm saying, get out to the theaters and go see Ezra. It is joyful and triumphant. So there, preaching over. All right, now a little something I know about being locked up. Maybe, maybe not. Regardless, 60 days in, we're going to go behind the scenes of one of the most brutal, one of the most hard states in America. Of course I'm talking about Utah. Utah? No, that's what they tell me. I talked to the sheriff himself behind this. He'll explain next as we take a look. Hey, welcome back. It is Take a Look. Thanks for hanging out. I always say we talk about screens of all size, but most of the time I'm talking about movies on the big screen. Well, now I'm not lying because we are going to be talking about something you can see at home. A&E is the home for 60 Days In. I know something about this show because I was actually a part of it. Oh, no, wait, my producer's telling me that wasn't actually a show that was court-ordered. Regardless, I do relate to this show. I think you will, too. Now, typically, they're in states and jails that you might associate with deeper crime. I was shocked to find out that this season was going to be in Utah. I'm a simpleton. I think of nothing but Sundance and the Morbin Tabernacle Choir. I had no idea crime was even allowed in Utah. It is. They got problems just like everybody else. I talked with Sheriff Mike Smith about it. Take a look. I apologize for the stereotype, but if you were to take the snapshot of Utah for the average U.S. citizen who hasn't been there, uh, and not completely incorrect, but they would think clean air, good living, they don't expect hard time in Utah. But to that point, you say. Well, I think that they're right. Um, we do have all of that. But uh, along with all of that, you also have the bad side, right? So we have the same, uh, maybe not the same levels as some areas, but we have the same crimes that occur here. And uh, we have our share of good boys and bad boys that live in Utah, or uh, and good girls and bad girls that live in Utah that uh, that we deal with. So uh, there is a need for a jail, and I think you'll see that uh, we have the same types of people in jail that you'll see in any other season. Sixty days. 60 Days In, the Utah edition. See it now on A&E. We thank him for his service. And to those seven people that are locked up, thank you for your service. You know, not to the community, but for television, because I like watching your antics. All right, coming up next, I'm making a note to Pixar Animation Studios. Your next movie should be Inside Out for 60 Days. Their next movie, Inside Out 2, is hitting theaters. Coming up next, we preview that movie, but more importantly, go behind the scenes of the first movie to tee it up as we take a look. We're doing it live. Welcome back. Uh, it is Take a Look. Thanks for hanging out with us as we talk about things of all screens and all sizes. Specifically next week, though, headed back to the big screen. It is Inside Out. I always get emotional when I talk about Pixar movies and especially this one because it's truly about emotions. Inside Out 1 now beget Inside Out 2. Riley has grown up and now she has anxiety, which we can all relate to. Pixar, you are brilliant. Anyway, let's get in a time machine and go back in the day when I sat down with these people for the first time to talk about it. Joy in one and two is Amy Poehler, and we talked. Take a look. I got to see pure, unbridled joy from you. I got to see joy experiencing joy. Why? Because the lunch menu came. <laughs> yeah, I'm just about to order my lunch. It's right. exciting. And I, this, you know, very important interview snatched you away from that. <laughs> However, with that said, did you have a chance to see something that brought you joy? On my might, lunch menu? Yeah, on your lunch menu. I just saw a chicken tortilla soup that made it just blew my mind. <laughs> that's that's that easy. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything on a menu that would make you feel anger? Maybe just like you know what like is overpriced wine because I know a, a little bit about like where wine comes from and what it costs to the wholesale yeah. cost. And when I go to a restaurant, I'm like, you guys don't have any option under fifty bucks. Okay. Oh, you don't have a nice white under fifty. All right, so I'm walking in here. We're in the historic Beverly Hilton Hotel. That's right. And they have this wall of fame because the hotel's turning 60 years old, oh. right? And so I'm looking. And what do you got? You'll look in this picture, and you'll see, like, the legend. You see uh -huh. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, other oh, couple presidents on there. And then down here, look, there's you. Hey, there I am. So is that going to blow your mind? That's right. It was, it was when I was married to Dean Martin. <laughs> I had yeah, no a lot of people don't know that. Me and Dean had a... It was, uh, it was, you know what, it was never boring. So little has talked about that because I know people don't want to bring in these interviews down, but does yeah. that make you feel if sad? If you watch some of the old roasts, 
you can see a, hey, uh, a negative 15-year-old version of me. You know why we don't see you? It's because back then everything was 4-3 ratio. <laughs> yeah, I'm, it right was on the end. I'm right on the edge. So funny. I cannot wait to see her in this new movie. And next week we will go big on it. And she joins us again only in the here and now to talk about it. All right. So it kind of makes me sad to bring up my inside out emotions, but two of the characters have been replaced, but I talked to the original voices. That would be Mindy Kaling and Bill Hader. Now, something that I will tell you right now, this interview is legendary. There are people trying to get the raw copy of it because they delve into an inappropriate area. I will never tell anyone what was discussed in this room, but here's a hint, take a look. Yeah, what's the first time you felt disgust? I think I Disgusting. <laughs> and I don't, and I think that, um... I'm not saying general things that disgust you. <laughs> what is happening? I'm not going to say it. We're losing control. <laughs> the ship is going down. All right, meet up with me sometime. Maybe in person I'll tell you if I like you. And chances are I like you because I like everybody. All right, I love this movie. Like I like everybody, I love everything Pixar puts out. Historically, it is the most Academy Award winning studio in the world. And we're going to go back on site next week from Pixar Animation Studios to talk with the entire cast of Inside Out 2. In the meantime, have yourselves an awesome time. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. And I'm shutting up now. See you.